بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله الطاهرين السلام عليكم and welcome to our program a program that is dedicated to the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'minin. We will be having uh, three or more programs uh, dedicated to Amir al Mu'minin. First and foremost, our condolences to the Imam of our time and to all our viewers, to all the lovers of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam, upon the night of injury of Amir al Mu'minin Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. We will be looking at the personality of Amir al Mu'minin. Uh, we will be going to be shedding some light in regards to the night of Qadr, being tonight the night of Qadr. The importance of the Masjid of Kufa, the historical events that unfolded before the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam as well. In order to discuss this, uh, we have uh, in our studio uh, with us Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin. Uh, Sheikh Ayyub Rashid, uh, thank you very much, Sheikh, for coming and Adam Allah wa wujurukum to you and to your family as well. Thank you very much and to you too and to your family and to the whole community. Adam Allah wa wa ujurahum jami'an. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight is also uh, one of the first nights of the night of Qadr. To begin with a little bit about the night of Qadr, how important the night of Qadr is which coincides with the night of the injury of Amir al-Mu'mini. <coughs> Definitely uh, there is uh, a lesson for us to be learned that on this special occasion, on this special night, which is the night of Qadr, begins the invitation of a special soul towards that final journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The 19th night, which is tonight, where Amir al muminin was injured, so this is the very first step towards that journey, towards that final journey. As we know that the night of Qadr is considered to be khayrum min al fishar, better than the thousand months. And imagine that such a night, a person is injured in the masjid of Kufa, in a very important masjid, in a very important mosque, uh, that we will look at it right now. And on a, such a night he has been injured. So how much of a reward and that even in the state where he is worshipping, where he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that even in a spot or in a place where it is considered as the peak of that masjid or the height of that masjid, which is the mihrab of that masjid. So the Masjid al Kufa has a very important historical uh, 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 reality towards it. And uh, it's been there for a very long time, even before the beginning of Islam. We have people who have visited and uh, are aware of there are places of different prophets. So, Shaykhuna, the Masjid al Kufa, mm. in terms of the its its status, in terms of its place amongst the Muslims, uh, perhaps we could talk a little bit about that, so that we know that what is this makan? Obviously, there is this zaman. I mean, there's this. This is like a combination of zaman and makan, time and space, and also the wujud of Amir al Mumini. Hmm. You know, the act itself, look, I mean, there's, there's kamal and perfection of every little thing here. Mashallah. There's a perfection of a life of a person, which is the life of Amir al Mumini. Hmm. There's a perfection of that makan. There's a perfection of that zaman, of that time, hmm. and hmm. night of Qadr, one of the nights of Qadr. And also the time of, in the state of prayers, mm, mm. you know, all of these things happening at one time, <clears throat> and it is unimaginable. You know, it is like something that looks very much divine and unique and special from all angles. It's perfection. It's Indeed. Kamal. Indeed. Now, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Masha Allah. The way you have put it is the right way, and that is. Uh, when you look at the life of Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, he's Amirul Mu'minin. All the Mu'minin, they take Ali alayhi salam as their Amir, the leader of the faithful. And this title was given to him by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And you can see that the impact he left behind is because of that Kamal which you have mentioned. Uh, he 
after the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we need to repeat this. There is nobody who has that Kamal after the Holy Prophet like Ali bin Abi Talib Alayhi Salam. And uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose him. <coughs> not only as a personality, wherever he went, wherever he was, that place was blessed. So now if you talk about Masjid Al-Kufa, it's truly as you have said, that this Masjid, number one is Masjid, and Kufa is the city where the Masjid was built. And we come to know that many messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala performed their salah at different spots, different corners of the masjid. So if someone was to go today to visit Masjid Al-Kufa, number one, there is blessing of visiting masjid. Every raka you pray at that particular masjid, there is a lot of thawab. Tahiyya lil masjid salah is offered to any masjid. But imagine you are going to do your salah in a place where Prophet Ibrahim prayed. Prophet Saleh prayed, Prophet Nuh prayed, Jibra'il also prayed, Amirul Mu'minin prayed. That particular spot on the day of Qiyamah will come and intercede to you to say that, Ya Allah, this individual prayed at this particular place. But for you to walk on the footsteps of Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam, and if you go to Masjid Kufa and you see all the places where other Anbiya Allah he prayed, this brings honor to the particular place. Unfortunately, Sheikhna, I will have to say this, that according to some Muslims, they haven't heard anything about Masjid Al-Kufa. They think that the holy places are Makkah, Medina, and Quds, Jerusalem. So they will mention about Masjid Al-Haram, which is good. They will mention about Masjid Al-Nabawi, which is good. They will mention something about Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is fine. However, they don't know something about Masjid Kufa. So inshallah, through this program, maybe people will come to know that there is another place which is known as Masjid Kufa. Amirul Mu'minin, Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, used to pray at this particular masjid, and when he attained his shahada, the shahada started from this particular masjid where we know, as we have mentioned, Anbiya Allah he used to pray here. Right. Now, if we don't mention other messengers and their stories, at least the story of Nabiullah Nuh alayhi salam is very important. We understand at the time of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, the tufan started from the kitchen of the house of Nabiullah Nuh. And Nabiullah Nuh told his wife that when you are going to see water coming from the kitchen, know that this is the beginning of Tufan. And that Tufan actually started there. So today when people go to pray at Masjid Kufa and you go and pray the place where Nabiullah Nuh used to pray, then you remember all the history. So you connect this and even connect with uh, the time of Islam. Now the Islam which was brought by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then you see the place which is Mihrab where Imam Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam used to pray. So the place needs to be visited. The place needs to be connected. And we need to go there for reflection. And anyone who has been there, he would agree with us that he has seen many people who pray from different nationalities at Masjid Kufa. Yes, definitely. I think... One of the unfortunate things that we see uh, today, uh, I'll just mention this very briefly in the margin, and it's very important that, uh, as you said, that you know many people are unaware of this masjid. And it's very much required that they create their awareness through which they would see the development of history. You know, like how Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, and the Tufan of Nuh, and Hazrat Ibrahim, and mm. other Hazrat Qizr, and many other prophets have prayed in that masjid, and they have their mihrab and their their their, their maqam, their, their, their spots are there, their sort of, you know, stations are there. Uh, one of the things that we see that is very unfortunate, so what is required of us, and many of us, is to really introduce 
the holy places, mm. these makana, these special places. Because uh, one thing I will mention here as well while mentioning that is that makan becomes a medium by which a man could easily connect to God. Mm, mm, mm. And that makan have an effect on the soul of the person. Indeed. You know, like for example, Masjid al-Haram. Like for example, any masjid, you know, any masjid that if we pray, the reward is multiplied. If I pray at home, there's less reward. But if I go to the masjid, mm. the reward is multiplied. Mm. And even <clears throat> from masjid to masjid, there is different rewards, mm, mm. right? You know, if you pray in the masjid which is in your locality, if you pray in the masjid which is for everybody, for example, the Eidgah or that big masjid, Jami Jami. masjid, right? Mm -hmm. So the reward kind of multiplies. The reason of this multiplication of the reward is because of the effect of that makan upon my prayers. Mm -hmm. Just like the, the, the effect of the zaman on my prayers. Mm. So makan has its own value. The makan of Arafa, this is what it is. Mm. The parameters is marked, this is what it is. Sure. If you are not there somewhere outside, there is kafara on you. You have to be within that. So that this makan is lifted up. Mm. This makan becomes very special. So masjid kufa is like that type of makan. Indeed. Where a human being where an insan can connect to God and those who have gone can easily deter that mm -hmm. that when they go into that masjid of Kufa they say this is something else indeed the effect the tasir the ubuhat the awe in that masjid is something else as mm -hmm. you rightly mentioned it is very much required that we reflect indeed you know, reflection is very important May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq that we go to the masjid and we reflect, we give some time, spend some time. You know, Ilahi instead of being rushing, rushing, you know, mm -hmm. usually mm -hmm. when we go to ziyarat, it's always rushy, rushy, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's required that we go and relax and reflect, pray jamaat, you know, spend some time. So that is in regards to the makan and it's very important that we make people aware of this makan. Indeed. And for them, you know, mm. Hazrat Ali alayhi salam is the fourth khalifa. Allah. And they should really know. And Indeed. while recognizing, they will recognize the importance of the masjid as mm. well and benefit from it. One last thing before you add a point, Shaykhuna. Yeah. That is, today, what we see under the name of progress and development, mm -hmm. they are destroying the holy sites. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Just mm. saying this is bidah. Yeah. But they are taking away the essential truth mm. of this. Yes, we are not worshipping the makan and masjid. You know, there is some value to it. Yeah. To that makan. Sure. To that space that is there. It's true. Right? Now, with the name of advancement and progress, they dismantle and they destroy. Or by the name of innovation and bidah, they dismantle mm. and destroy. Mm. And both of these phenomena, the phenomena of calling it a traditional ritual which have spiritual value as innovation, mm. is a new, is a secular and new phenomena. Indeed, right? Because they call this. Now, the religious people call this as innovation. Mm -hmm. But the modern people, they call this as superstition and destroy it. Mm -hmm. The purpose is the same. Mm -hmm. They have to destroy this because this is having an effect on deen. Mm -hmm. So if this is not there, either by the name of superstition and by calling it progress, mm -hmm. development, or by the name of innovation and bidah, mm -hmm. you know, these two are, you know, it's like scissors, they used to cut this. That's why we see there's an elimination of these holy sites yeah. taking place everywhere. Yeah. So which is quite important <clears throat> to really pay attention. Yeah, so that's why we remember the word heritage and this title heritage is very important because for people who know the importance of heritage, they keep the heritage as it was started by the people who were before us because why they know the importance of Makan. Makan goes with heritage. If you change a particular place because of development, because of whatever they call innovation, then you lose the heritage. It says so sad, Sheikhna, the way you, you have said. Today you look at non-Muslims. For example, British, 
society. They are buildings which are known as listed buildings. By law, you can't change. You have to keep, if you buy these buildings which are listed buildings, you can't do any, any, any big changes. You have to keep them the way they are. Why? Because this is heritage. You go to many places in London, you see buildings which are over 100 years. You look at them, they remind you about history. That Macan. You go to Rome, same thing. You go to America, same thing. Heritage has to be preserved. I don't know why we, some of we as Muslims, we demolish for the name of development. Let us bring new things which they don't have any connection. Sometimes you look at some buildings which are tall, huge, but they don't make you to have that spiritualism. It's just like you are in any other places around the world where you don't connect the place with people, place with ibadah, and so on and so forth. So alhamdulillah with Masjid Kufa, the, the place has been placed, uh, has been, uh, uh, if we can use the word, listed uh, in the way that you go to this particular area and it reminds you about Allah, messengers of Allah, it reminds you about Amirul Mu'mineen Ali, alayhi salam, reminds you about companions like Komel ibn Ziyad and, and uh, 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 Muslim, Muslim, uh, bin, Muslim bin Aqil and others. They reminded you about that. And uh, this is the place where you can be, fi you can find yourself that you are almost with the history. So that Makan. And Zaman also, when you are mentioning about Zaman, Zaman of Imam Amirul Mu'minin when he was there, this reminds me about one thing which is very important. There are some people, unfortunately again, they think that Islam is only connected with Mecca and Medina. And Islam is only in this area of Hijaz, which today we call it Saudi Arabia. So Islam is not connected with other places. In order for someone to know Islam has to go to Mecca and Medina only. While the case is not that. Islam, Rasulullah did not restrict it to Mecca and Medina only. So we have Imam Amirul Mu'minin who attain his shahada from Kufa and he is buried in Najaf, you can see the historical places in that area and many other places also. So in, 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 in a way when we talk about Makan of Imam Ali with Masjid Kufa also, it is like and I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, decreed that Imam Ali alayhi salam will attain his shahada from this place so that people can have that connection also. Not only with Mecca and Medina, but beyond Mecca and Medina, wherever you go, you can find Islam there. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. And plus, uh, the, the, the shrine of Amirul Mu'mineen, as mm -hmm. we are talking about Makan, mm. you know, perhaps we could, we could talk about later as, as well where Isha he's buried. Allah. There's a connection with that with the previous Anbiya as well. Mm. You know, the, the mm. place he's, 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 he's buried in, in Najaf. Indeed. Yeah. Now, the events that unfolded, to, which really led to the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'minin, Kufa was become the capital. Amir al Mu'minin made this as a capital, and it was a town, it was considered to be a barracks, you know, where you know, they have all gathered sort of troops. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also, obviously, in history later on, it became a center of education and so on and so forth. But initially, that's how it was. It was a town, barrack towns where they are, because they were borders with the Syria, with, mm. the, with the Syria, and they were fighting with, you know, with the army, you know, from Syria, which was led by Maavia you mm. know, in history. And that's where uh, Amir al Mu'minin he moved basically from Medina, where he was stationed and based. Yeah. From there he moved to Kufa, and he stationed himself in Kufa, uh, and he stayed there, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, this fitna, this fight, this battle, which took place, uh, according to many of the Ahl Sunnah as well, uh, it was quite an unfortunate that we see that you know the Syrians but what I wanted to point out here is that there has been a conflict of way before Islam as well mm -hmm. that we see that the Romans 
you know, conflicting with the with the with the with the Arabs or with the Persian that they were at that time before. Mm -hmm. That this Kufa was always a, 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 always in a time of at the time there was always in history always a battle going on because mm -hmm. that was the place where they used to clash, mm -hmm. even prehistorically, meaning that even before Islam they used to. So the the animosity of the Romans, even they have converted to Muslims and all that. It was something going on in their blood, kinda, mm, mm, and mm. they always not liked, you know, the Arabs, you know. Yeah, and and this point is very important again to remind those who maybe don't know or they didn't see the connection of Islam to these places. It's uh, uh, correctly as you you have said that Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam moved from Medina, and he went to Iraq. And that was uh, uh, for the battle of Jamal, uh, which happened in Basra. And then later on, he decided to station himself in this area of Kufa. So Imam Ali, Ali, Ali Islam made it as a city uh, or capital city of Islam, where he ruled Islam and Muslims from this particular place. And the place became very famous in, in, in many aspects. Uh, it was a learning center and so on and so forth. One thing which also I can add here is that uh, in terms of grammar and uh, linguistic approach of Islam, you find that there were two stations, two places. One is Kufa and another one is Basra. There were scholars of Arabic language, especially to do with Nahaw and Sarf, if you can call them syntax and uh, morphology. They, they used to compete this is after the martyrdom of Imam Amir al that the people of Kufa would bring a sort of uh, Arabic grammar rule. People of Basra will have a different rule. And there would be kind of discussions. Alhamdulillah for all Muslims, Sunnis, Shias, those who have attachment with Arabic language, they know this particular factor. But when we talk about Kufa, we come to know that many companions with, of Imam Amir al alayhi salam they went to live there because of Amirul Mu'minin was living in the city of Kufa. And there were many people from Yemen who moved to Kufa. Uh, there were many people from, if we can call it Iran, Persia, they moved to Kufa. So it was like a multinational city because of Imam Amirul Mu'minin. And imagine to live with Amirul Mu'minin. It's full of barakah. There were many cases which were... Uh, were judged at that particular masjid, Masjid Kufa. And each case when you hear, you come to learn that subhanallah, Amirul Mu'minin left a legacy for the people of Iraq and truly speaking we need to congratulate the people of Iraq for taking care of Masjid Kufa because why? If you go today to, for, for example for visit, for ziyara, you will find there are those khuddam. Jazahumullah khair al jaza. They will tell you each and every detail of each and every place they have preserved the historical heritage of this place properly. This is where Amirul Mu'minin recited his dua. This is where he prayed his nafila. This is where, and so on and so forth. So the place is full of history and we urge again and again those who haven't visited this place to do so because this makan of Amirul Mu'minin is so special, reminds us about Amirul Mu'minin and even his family. So when we talk now about Zaman. Yes. Zaman. Yes, of, as you know, you know, tonight being the night of Qadr, the first night of Qadr is divided into three. However, you know, uh, we will briefly point out to the reality of this special night. And obviously with the martyrdom, with the shahadat of Amirul Mu'minin and when we spend time in recitation of the Masai, remembering Amirul Mu'mineen, it multiplies because Amir, the Prophet have clearly mentioned dhikr Ali ibadah. Yes. You know, the dhikr, the mentioning of Amirul Mu'mineen is ibadat. And particularly on tonight, you know, we shed tears on the, you know, on the shahadat and how, how he was severed, how he was injured, you know, in that fashion. And as we also know that the children of uh, of Ali is becoming orphan and they also suffered and mm. it really touches the heart. The night of Qadr 
is a night which is a perpetual night which means that every year it is the night of Qadr. It is not something that happened in history. Indeed. But rather it happens every time. It is that night on which the Malaika, the angels and also the Ruh descends from the heaven. You know, brings the Qadr and the destiny. You know, Qadr means that the measured amount, right? That measured amount for the one whole year is sent. It's like that night, like a budget, so to speak, that comes down from the heaven. And obviously, you know, one thing which is very logical, where will these Malaike and Ru and Qadr will descend, right? It's like when you have a plane, you need a, you know, run airport. airport. Mm. You need a runway. So it's something that is continuous, something that is perpetual, that is all the time going. You know, meaning that going in the sense that you're all the time happening, the same night, which is the night of Qadr. Continuously. Yeah, continuously. And this Malaika, descent of a Malaika happens on the nights of Qadr. So that, you know, there has to be some commonality. You know, something that is descending, which will have, must land somewhere, must come somewhere. And there should be that sort of compatibility. You know, when you have a USB, you know, if the material that is supposed to be downloaded is 8 GB, if you are only 2 GB, it will not download. Mm. It needs bigger sort of, you know, mm. gigabyte space. to download space for all of that. Mm. Now we are talking about Malaike or Ru and Qadr, you know, descending from the heaven. So it requires a big heart. You know, it requires the heart of an Imam. Mm. a masoom, you know, that heart which have that capacity to really take that. Mm. So that is the night of Qadr on that night where the Malaike descend upon the heart of the Imam of the time. At that time it was, you know, Amirul Mu'mineen, you know, and then today we have the 12th Imam. Right? And it is so fascinating that, you know, with the martyrdom of Amirul Mu'mineen, we are reminded of the night of Qadr. Mm. With the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'mineen, we are reminded of the Imam Waqt. Mm. You know, we are reminded of Masjid al Kufa, we are reminded of Imam Zaman on the night, you know, in Istirab and praying in Masjid al Kufa on Thursday night, as some of ayat says. Mm -hmm. And then he will pray, and Friday morning he will announce himself. From Kufa, he will go to Makkah. Allah. And he will announce from there. So. And, 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 and also, you know, the capital will remain Mas Kufa he, mm -hmm. during the time of the Imam Zaman. He will not change the capital appar apparently, mm -hmm. according to some riwayat, because it is Ali who have changed it. Mm -hmm. Amirul Mu'mineen made that, you know, Kufa as the capital and it will remain Kufa. So it is that night, the Malaike descending with the Qadr, with the destiny of man, the Qur'an descended on that night in one go upon the heart of the Prophet. You know, it says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَاءَ تَنَزُّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحِ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ سَلَامٌ So this is salam. So this whole night is peace, is, peace, is salam, is perfect, salim, from all aib. Mm -hmm. far away from all limitation. It is that night, the perfect of all night. And whatsoever is supposed to take place is taking place in this night, mm -hmm. in that condensed format. Mm -hmm. If the whole Quran is revealed on the heart of the Prophet in that condensed fashion, and then you extend this Quran, till where? Till the darajat of heaven is based on the Quran. Subhanallah. So that condensed version, if you extend it, even the Jannah, which is supposed to be, you know, made, and the levels of Jannah is based on that, on that condensed version, which was revealed mm. to the Prophet. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is then in that chip, so to speak, which will expand. So it is that night. So tawassul, praying, worshipping, and remembering Amirul Mu'mineen. It is the most perfect of all that zaman. Awesome. And I think, yeah, the connection which you have mentioned is very important to remind us that uh, uh, Allah is the one who decreed that Imam Amirul Mu'mineen, his uh, martyrdom would start 
on the night which is known as Laylatul Qadr. There is a point here, some, sometimes people are a bit confused and we need to make it clear. That the Holy Prophet وسلم, has said clearly in his hadith and all Muslims accept this hadith. Iltamisuha fil ashiril awakhir. Search yes. for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 days yes. or 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. So when we mention that uh, the 19th night was the beginning of Shah, uh, Laylatul Qadr, some people say 19 nights is not one of the last 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. Mm -hmm. However, the point has been clarified by scholars saying that Shah Ramadan has either 30 days or 29 days. Subhanallah. So Laylatul Qadr, if you say you have to search it from night 20, 20th of Shah Ramadan, you may miss those 10 days if Shah Ramadan ends with 29 nights or 29 days. So when we say 19th night is because of that. The Holy Prophet says, search it for from the last 10 nights yes. or 10 nights of Shah Ramadan. And this 19 nights is the night which uh, uh, will, will be one, the first night which we need to search for, Laylatul Qadr. And then of course 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and even some narration 29th in those old, old nights. So Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, as we understand, he was fasting on that particular day. And uh, after observing fasting, uh, he was seen as if he was someone thinking about his akhirah. Always Imam alayhi salam thought about, about his akhirah. But on that particular, uh, on that particular night, Oh, before that, the family saw Imam Amirul Mu'minin in a very different uh, kind of uh, uh, relationship with them as well as with the Akhirah because this, the time of Iftar, I remember clearly reading from the books of history that Imam Amirul Mu'minin used to have his, his Iftar either from his son Imam Hassan or Imam Hussein or Sayyida Zainab. And on this particular night, Imam alayhi salam had his iftar from the daughter, Sayyida Zainab. Sayyida Zainab was with Imam Amirul Mu'minin in Kufa. And this lady played a major role in teaching women of Kufa. And his, her dars of tafsir was of highest caliber. That even men, when they were receiving information from their wives of the discussions they had with Sayyida Zainab, it was like amazing lessons we had from so Imam Amirul Mu'minin had his iftar there and he ate very little. And the children were saying, Baba, oh Father, dear Amirul Mu'minin, why are you eating so little? And he said, yes, this, this could be one of those nights. Yes. This could be. Why? Because he was told by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that your day will come and there will be some signs and Imam Amirul Mu'minin was waiting for that particular moment. So you can imagine after having f uh, that particular type of fasting in that particular area and then going home, having iftar with the family and then Imam alayhi salam would talk about his last moments. It was a difficult for the family members. And then he decided to go to sleep but normally Imam Amirul Mu'minin would sleep and wake up just before uh, before 